Today we are going to create a events fireball and in order to do so you need to make sure you have the previous script down. So first what you want to do like always is open up Roblox Studio. Once you're in studio uh, you want to start off by building the fireball. Now I've actually already created the fireball and created the entire working script. Um, Due to how long it took uh, just to change it, I just created it and now I plan really telling you guys how to make it. So what you want to do is add a fireball, make sure the size is 1, 1, 1. Then you want to make sure the color is red and it has a transparency of 0 0.5. Next you want to make sure the material is neon. After that, you want to add a particle emitter and then add your own fire effect. But then you want to modify your particle emitter. So what you want to do is change the speed to zero, open up home, toolbox, search up fire particle, get some sort of fire particle. Copy the texture, then delete the decal. Now, when you move your mouse, it might be like this. Just click, left click, delete the decal, and it won't happen anymore. Go to texture of the particle emitter and insert the fire part particle. Next, you want to change the light emission to 0.5. And then you want to change the color to however you want. Next you want to change the lifetime to 1, maybe add a bit of rotation to it and some rotation speed. After that, change this thread angle to 360 degrees and maybe increase the rate by a bit. Lastly. Put a nice 0.5 transparency and maybe it'll look a bit better. Now you can change the properties however you like but I already made my fireball and if you would like to copy the exact look then go ahead and copy these properties. If you're wondering how I got this type of property, all you have to do is click on the color and then click the three dots. What you want to do is click one arrow, click the color, change it to red, close out, make a arrow in the center by clicking and then it, an arrow should appear. Press that and then just change it so that it looks better. Next, go to the last one, and I changed it to orange, but you guys can change it to something else if it would look better. Next, change light emission to 0 0.5, light influence to 1. Like color sequence, you want to click the number sequence and press the three dots. Make sure the first square is at 0 and the last square is at 1 basically right in the middle next make sure the texture is rbx set id column slash slash 1278 127663 Next, make sure the transparency is at 0, Z offset 0, and then we want to go to the bottom. Make sure it's enabled, lifetime 1, rate 50, rotation 180, rock speed 90, speed 0, spread angle 360, 360. After that, place the fireball into the replicated storage. What you want to do is open up Simpler Fireball. 
Now this script is actually from the fireball script from uh, the four. Now I'm going to call it advanced fireball. Also going down, you want to go to here and maybe change the name if you want, but I'm going to change it to U2 Advanced Fireball Tutorial. So first off, let's look at the scripts. In our local script, we have the same services in our variables. I spelled that wrong. Uh, in our variables, we have the same variables, no difference. Our settings are still the same. What's new is the animation. Now, how do you add an animation? Well, first, you want to create an animation. So, what I'm going to do is pretend that I've created an animation by just showing you how. First, you want to make sure you have the plugin, and if you don't, want to, you want to make sure you install it by pressing manage plugins find plugin and then the animator i'm not going to show you guys how because that's not what we're doing today assuming that you know how to make an animation make sure you have an animation i'm just going to insert a animation make sure the settings check the settings and edit make sure the priority is action if you want to know how to change it just press it and then you can choose action make sure this is not blue or else it will loop and that's really it now i already have my animation down so what you want to do is local animation equals instance dot new animation create an animation change the animation id to rbx asset id column slash slash and then the animation number to find this there are multiple ways when you export the animation it will go to the roblox develop page just press animation open up the fireball animation or animation of any kind just copy the number here and replace this number with that number make sure it's exact and one more thing you want to make sure you export the animation after you can just press create new name it and then give it a description just make sure you have the id all right so opening up the local script again after you have the animation down we still have the same thing and then local key pressed and all these are still the same the only difference is we've added two new lines load animation so what this does is load the animation in and play the animation so what you want to do is local load animation equals character dot humanoid low animation animation so it's gonna load this animation and then you play the animation and that's it for our um, local script next service script service script in our services we've added a new service called debris in our variables we've added a new variable called fireball now you want to make sure your fireball is in replicated storage you also want to make sure it's called fireball so that local fireball equals replicated storage of fireball. Please make sure you spelled it correctly. I have had people direct messaging me about not working and all they did was spell this E wrong. Next in the settings we have damage, still the same. So now we have a new variable called local server debouncing equals these columns now this is actually a table and I want to talk about filtering enabled so filtering enabled is what buffs the security that does not mean your game is not exploitable having a debounce on the server is always better than having it on the client 
and this is why filtering enabled is uh, always safer because it's just filtering most of the stuff now this again doesn't mean that it's unhackable a poor filtering enabled written code can make it easier to hack as well anyway back on track we still has remote.onserver event connect function we still have a debounce so we've actually added this if not server debounces player then server debounces player equals true now this adds so basically what this does is check if there's a server debounce of the player currently if not then you add one so that right now uh, so right now this won't run because you already have one so going down here a few new th not really new things we've deleted the local part and added it with local fireball clone equals fireball clone because fireball refers to the fireball and replicated storage we set the cframe to the character humanoid root part times cframe dot new zero zero negative three what this does is set the cframe right in front of the player after we've set the fireball clone dot parent to the workspace so we can actually see it the local body velocity has no difference except we have removed the times so the only change is body velocity dot velocity equals mouse dot look vector we've added a spawn function so that the fireball will increase and the speed will increase both as time passes and lastly we just set the server debounce to false again so the player can use the move again this debris line what it does is after 10 seconds the fireball clone will be destroyed now you may be wondering how come we just can't do wait 10 well wait 10 will actually cause the entire script to wait while this will not stop the script running so then we have our good old touch function and event so local debounce same thing same thing same thing let me just properly indent and the only new thing we've added is this section so fireball clone dot transparency equals one body velocity destroy fireball clone dot effect dot speed equals number range eight eight so one more thing you want to make sure the particle emitter inside the fireball is called effect with a capital e wait one fireball clone dot effect enabled equals false wait one fireball clone destroy wait five debounce equals true we can actually decrease this to three and it wouldn't change so let's test this out i will be posting the scripts in the description below so let's give this a try so as you can see when it hits the target it will cause a small explosion in the particles now it will look different for depending on what the particles you are using one thing we can do is increase the size at a higher rate so that it looks a bit bigger but that is totally up to you all i'm doing is showing you that this script is much more uh, better so as you can see our animation is playing as well so it looks like we are throwing the fireball the enemy is taking damage and there are effects going on so let's go ahead and spam notice that it spawns three studs in front of me that's what the c-frame does and that's really it hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial 
the next tutorial will be dependent on what you guys request. Feel free to direct message me or comment down below on what tutorial you would like. And I will be posting this code in the description below. It's you and me.